I've got a cracking video for you today. The aircraft behind me is a fireball. Six million dollar firefighting aircraft. And we're about to get an exclusive tour. Andrew, can I hit the siren? Yeah, go for it. I'll come around the front here and I'll, and I'll show you the bomb doors. Hey guys, B Snappy here. I'm here with Andrew Biggs. He's gonna talk us through this amazing firebox. How are you, Andrew? Yeah, good, good to meet you. This is an amazing looking aircraft. What make and model is it? Uh, this is an air tractor, 8A2, and famously known as the Fireboss. Let's get started with the features. How does it actually get filled with water? We've got um, underneath the float in front of the main landing gear, we have um, what they call scoops or probes. So these are the probes here. They'll fold down, and when the pilot lands on the water, you activate it, pilot activated from the cockpit, and they scoop the water up, and when you get your sufficient amount you're happy with, it continues up a tunnel here. It's called a scoop tunnel up into your hopper, and a hopper holds around 3,000 litres of, of liquid. So how long does it take to fill up the hopper when you're on the water? Uh, depending on weather conditions and things, but around 20 to 30 seconds approximately, depending on how much load you're taking in the hopper at the time. So where does the water actually come out then? I'll come around the front here and I'll, and I'll show you the bomb doors. So up above in here is the hopper. Yeah. And these, these doors here now are open. So that's the hopper, that's where your water will come out at a desirable level. You can adjust that on the coverage level in the cockpit, um, depending on what type of fire you're fighting. So how close are you actually gonna to get to the fire? Uh, depending on what, if you're on a grass fire or a forest fire, but you're normally sitting approximately 80 to 100 feet above, above the target you wanna drop on. So this aircraft is carrying a lot of weight and it's just a really big aircraft in general. What sort of engine is it running? Yeah, well our max takeoff weight's a bit over 7,000 kilograms for the Fireboss. Yeah. Uh, we run a Pratt & Whitney PD6-67F engine, and that's uh, 1,600 horsepower. So can it take salt water and fresh water? Uh, yeah, it can, yeah. So we can, we can scoop salt or fresh. We like to scoop fresh if we can, just because, as you know, corrosion is a yeah. big thing in aeroplanes, but we do do salt water regularly as well. All four wheels fully retract. Yeah. We've got an indication in the cockpit with our four blue lights. Can't see underneath where this one retracts. How does that work? No, no, it sort of comes up here and it, and it slides back in these tunnels in here. And the rear wheels, they just go straight up inside the float. So how does the rudder system work? Uh, these are what they call water rudders. And we only yeah. ever use these when you stop on the water. So we yeah. very, very rarely use them on a fire boss. They're just there when you're taxing, water taxing. So what is this? Okay, so if we can't, if the water conditions are unsuitable or unsafe, we can land back at the runway at the fire base. And yep. we can load a three inch cam lock fitting and that refills our hopper with retardant or water as well for the firefighting. This is a two seater plane. Do you train pilots in this? Uh, yeah, so this this is a fully dual cockpit. So yes, the instructor can sit in the rear yep. um, and, and, and instruct the student. Also, when we're overseas, the rear cockpit gets used for the, the interpreter. It sits yeah. in the back seat to assist the pilot in, uh, in language. All right, the big question. What would be the cost to buy one of these? Oh, approximately and brand new, around $6 million approximately for a brand new one. <gasps> thereabouts. Whoa, that is a lot of money. It is, yes. Would you like to sit in the cockpit? Oh, I'd love to. Let's go. Thanks. And part of the challenge is climbing your way up there. You put a foot, left foot in here and a right foot in there. And you've got to handle the punch sure you hold on nice and securely there. All right. And send up on the black up here, and I'll follow you up there. Put your left foot on there. Yeah. Put your right foot up on there. Yeah. And there's a handle there you can hold on to, and then shimmy your way in, and you can sit in there. First thing I noticed when I looked down at my feet, I can actually see the water tank. Yeah, that's right. And all the markings on the hopper there, so you can always have a glance there to see what quantity you had. Left and also on our fire gate, it tells us digitally also yeah. on our computer screen there also what we're carrying. When you're going for a fire, what's actually guiding you? Are you doing it by eye or are you doing it by screen? Uh, we're doing it by eye in conjunction with the ground crews. So we get a lot of information from the ground crews telling us where they want us so we can assist in the best. But it's all stick and rudder flying and yeah. visual. Uh, this screen here, we can adjust the coverage levels and the quantity that you want to drop on the particular fire. And you notice where I'm sitting, I'm sitting up high. So there's also big windows each side so they can see absolutely everything. So how efficient's the motor? Like, what's the fuel usage? Uh, we're quite high in the power settings when we're flying because obviously we're quite heavy and heavily yeah. loaded. 
And it's around that high 300 to 400 litres an hour that we're oh. burning. So we normally do a three-hour mission. Yeah. And then we come back for a refuel. So what's the cruise speed on this when you're not full of water? Oh, a nice endurance cruise and a fire boss is around about 130, 140 knots thereabouts. How do you even get into the back of the aircraft? Uh, well, it's a, it's a slight, it's a bit awkward, but basically stand up on the rail here like you did hop in the front cockpit and that door there also opens and you just shimmy yourself down the rail and into the back. Did you know before they're about to drop the water, they hit the siren? So to make the ground crew aware. Andrew, can I hit the siren? Yeah, go for it. How cool was that? I never pictured hitting a fire siren in an aeroplane. So not only are you fighting fires just in Australia, but you're fighting fires all around the world. Is it just this plane or do you have like a fleet? Uh, we got seven, we'll have five fire bosses now and we have three wheel machines and yeah we go overseas in our Australian winter and we've got contracts in multiple states here and in Australia during the Australian summer. These guys aren't just a one man band, it is a serious operation they have. So what's your website? How do people find out more about you? Uh, paysairservice.com.au And they're based out at Scone Airport which is where we are right now. This has been so amazing, Andrew. Thanks for showing me who the fire boss. Glad you enjoyed it. Any time.